Dear friends, welcome back again. In the last video, we discussed different types of fully fashioned garments. The comparison was more of an introduction on how the fully fashioned garments look and are different from each other. In this video, we discuss technical details of fully fashioned garment knitting. Starting with the geometry of a fully fashioned garment that will help in making the right patterns. The pattern making concept shall not be based on empirical knowledge. The garment technician shall be able to determine the exact values calculated using precise mathematics and one shall not try to simplify the mathematical procedure at any given time. The knitting programmer shall be able to distinguish the difference between the mandatory points of measurements, the supplementary points of measurements, and the derived points of measurements. And why this is needed is because by improving the fit of the knitwear, we can elevate the body image of the wearer. And this is the sole purpose for making a garment. From today, we look at the subject of fully fashioned garment manufacturing based on scientific methods and not any empirical knowledge. And we don't leave any room for any kind of guesswork. For more detailed information, you may go through my book on fully fashioned sweater manufacturing. A guide to fully fashioned sweater manufacturing. Published by Woodhead Publishing India Private Limited. The book is available in leading bookstores in almost all the countries around the world. It is also available on Amazon. Today I present video part 1 on sweater geometry as this topic cannot be covered in one video. So it may take 3 to 4 videos to cover the subject. The reason for having more than one video to cover the subject is because I don't want to have a video that is longer than 10 to 12 minutes. As we have time limitations, so let's start with the subject. A garment looks beautiful if the union points of the front, the back, and the sleeve lie perfectly on the shoulders of the wearer. The common mistake, which at times they don't realize is that most of the time, as these panels are knitted and not woven, the loops compensate for the deficiencies of the defects in the shapes of the front, the back, and the sleeves. The garment may measure accurately, but the expert eye will always know that because of the inaccuracy of panels, the stitches or the knitted loops do get distorted and are not aligned vertically and horizontally. A very nicely made garment, when placed on a table shall have, all the courses and whales are in straight lines, which at times becomes very difficult to achieve. Most importantly, the arms of the sweater shall extend at the same angle, as that of the shoulder slope. The sleeves shall not puff out at the shoulder joint, nor shall they cave in. Therefore the most important measurement in a sweater, is the slope of the shoulder. And the arm as the angle so created by the shoulder, shall be the angle of the sleeve slope as well. The angle of the shoulder slope. As discussed earlier to knit a good sweater, the slope of the arms of the sweater, shall be at the same angle as that of the shoulder slope. It, therefore, becomes necessary to understand the importance of the shoulder slope and, how to ascertain the angle of the shoulder slope. Surprisingly, the shoulder slope is not given due respect by the knitters and their customers, that it demands. And now, that we talk about the angle of the shoulder slope, and not the measurement of the shoulder drop, it becomes necessary, to understand the geometry, of the fully fashioned garment. Before we go any further, it is necessary to understand, a little about the basics of a right angled triangle. A right angled triangle is a triangle that has, one angle equal to 90 degrees. A right angle triangle also follows the Pythagoras theorem. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse in a right angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of both the adjacent and the opposite, that is, square of AB equals square of BC plus square of AC, where AB is the line between A and B, also called the hypotenuse. AC the line between points A and C, also called the adjacent, and BC the line formed between points B and C, and also called the opposite. 
In trigonometrics the same can be said in the following ways. B divided by A equals sine of alpha or B is equal to A multiplied by sine of alpha. Also, C divided by A equals cos of alpha or C is equal to A multiplied by cos of alpha. And B divided by C equals tan of alpha or B is equal to C multiplied by tan of alpha. That is all that needs to be refreshed in our minds about geometry and trigonometry that we all learned in school. A nicely made flat knit garment, when laid on a table, shall lie flat. And therefore, if the slope of the arm shall match the slope of the shoulder, the first thing to do is to ascertain the angle of the shoulder slope. The ideal angle of the shoulder slope, as believed by many designers, garment technologists, is 20 degrees. But it may vary between 18 degrees to 23 degrees. The angle of the shoulder is controlled by the shoulder drop and the distance between the edge of the neck and the edge of the shoulder where the top of the arm joins the shoulder. And if we all read that, the shoulder slope shall be close to 20 degrees, we can confirm if the degree of angle of the shoulder lies between 18 and 23 degrees. Let's take the example of the given measurement chart. The shoulder width given is 44 centimeters, the neck width given is 18 centimeters, the half value of the shoulder width minus neck width is 13 centimeters. The shoulder drop given is 4.75 centimeters. The tan value of angle theta would be 4.75 divided by 13, would be 0 0.363. The degrees of this tan value is equal to 20 degrees. Hence the angle of the shoulder is equal to 20 degrees. Once we know the angle of the shoulder, to get the arm slope to coincide with the slope of the shoulder, we need to find out and know the angle of the arm. The angle of the arm is the angle at which it will join the armhole of the body. If the angle of the arm is smaller than the angle of the shoulder, the sleeve will have a batwing effect, as shown in the illustration. A bigger angle will have a bigger cap of the arm and will result in more yarn to be used as well as more knitting time for sure, however, it may fit well on the body of the wearer. This is the reason why it is necessary, to understand the geometry of a fully fashioned garment. If this angle is not right, the garment may get stitched, but, will not look good and, will also not fit well. Also please note, this is a fully fashioned garment, we are talking about, and we cannot make corrections by cutting it, but, we have to do the knitting calculations all over again, and we have to re-knit the panels once more. I have observed, that many programmers, and designers, fail to knit the garment, in the right size, in their first attempt, and on many occasions, they get the sizes with intolerance, in their second and most likely in the third attempt. The only reason for this is, the T they have not understood, the geometry of the styles, they are trying to make, and they resort to simplifying their mathematical calculations. To obtain the angle of the sleeve, we first need to calculate the angle of the armhole. This is the angle between C, A, and B as per the illustration. The triangle CAB is a right angle triangle. In this triangle, we know the armhole measurement. We also know the chest measurement and the shoulder measurement. The length between A to B is equal to half of the difference between the chest and the shoulder measurement. As per our measurement sheet, the chest width is equal to 54 centimeters, and the shoulder measurement is 44 centimeters. The difference between the two is equal to 10 centimeters, and half of it is equal to 5 centimeters. In a right angle triangle, if we know the measurement of two sides, the measurement of the thirds, and all the angles of the triangle can be calculated. We therefore, can easily calculate the angle of the armhole. AB, divided by AC, is equal to the cost value of the armhole angle. The angle between C, A, and B. So, 5, divided by armhole measurement, that is 22 centimeters, is equal to, 0, 0.2, 2, 7, and 2. For this cause value, the angle in degrees, is equal to 77 degrees. Once we know the angle of the armhole, 
calculating the angle of the sleeve is a child's play. If we divide a rectangle, into two parts diagonally, as shown in the illustration, the angles between CAB and DCA are always equal to each other. If we look at the illustration more closely, we can see, that the angle of the armhole, is the sum of, the angle of the shoulder slope, and, the angle of the arm. Or in other words, the angle of the arm, is equal to the angle of the armhole, minus, the angle of the shoulder. Therefore, the angle of the arm will be, equal to 77, minus, 20, that is 57 degrees. But, why shall one be bothered to find out the angle of the arm? The answer is to make sure how much shall be the measurement of the cap of the sleeve or head of the sleeve that will ensure that the arm will fit into the body at the angle same as that of the shoulder slope. A variation in this sleeve cap measurement will tilt the sleeve up if the size of the sleeve cap is small and down if the size of the sleeve cap is bigger than that. To calculate the sleeve cap, from the angle of the sleeve, is to divide, the width of the sleeve, with, the value of tan for the angle of the sleeve. In our case, the width of the sleeve is, 19 and a half centimeters, and, the value of tan for, 55 degrees, is equal to, 1.54. So the cap of the sleeve 19 and a half divided by 1.54 is equal to 12.7 centimeters. Therefore, to get the same slope of the arm, as that of the shoulder slope, we need to knit 12.7 centimeters of the sleeve, from the point of joint of the lower part of the sleeve, with the main body of the garment. The valve of the sleeve cap, also tells us, what is the length of the sleeve, we need to knit, to get to the point, from where we need to start the narrowing of the sleeve. In our case, as the sleeve length measured from the shoulder is 50 centimeters, and, the cuff height is 5 centimeters. If we subtract the cuff height, that is 5, and the sleeve cap, that we calculated to be 12.7, the balance, after subtracted these from the total value of 60 centimeters equals, to 42.3. This tells us, that to get to the point, from where we have to start, the narrowing process, we need to knit 42.3 centimeters of sleeve, after knitting 5 centimeters of cuff rib. We also know, that the measurement of the sleeve width, is normally measured at, 2 centimeters below the sleeve joint, this means that the sleeve shall measure the given sleeve width, at 42.3 minus 2, which is equal to 40.3 centimeters. As we will be starting with needles for 7.5 centimeters of the cuff opening size, and, we go to 19 and a half centimeters, for the sleeve width, or the muscle size, we need to increase, needles for 12 centimeters, while we knit, 40 centimeters of sleeve length. By understanding and, applying simple mathematics, geometry, and a bit of trigonometry, we can very accurately calculate, these measurements, that, are not provided by the customer, but, are essentially needed, to meet the measurements, provided by the customer. In this video, we have covered, the basic measurements related, to the calculations required to ascertain, the proper size of the sleeve cap, required to get not just ethically good looking garment, but, we also ensure that the garment will fit well. In the next video, we will discuss the measurements, related to the shoulder width, waist width, front and back across, the length, the side length, etc. of the garment, and, how to calculate these using scientific methods, and, not leaving anything on guesswork. Throughout the series, your valued suggestions, as well as questions, will be welcome, and, I shall be too glad to answer all your queries. For more detailed information, please go through my book on Fully Fashioned Sweater Manufacturing. A Guide to Fully Fashion Sweater Manufacturing Published by Woodhead Publishing India Private Limited The book is available in leading bookstores in almost all the countries around the world. It is also available on Amazon. Technicians 
programmers, product developers, designers, and companies interested to get the measurements of their proto samples right in the first go. Can also try my software for knitting data calculations. The calculations used are accurate, and you can easily make a garment with not only the right specs, but a garment that looks good and fits even better, elevating the image of the wearer. To obtain a copy, please do contact me at email PURISK51 at gmail.com or on my mobile number. Country code 91, number 81464009000. Thanks for watching. And if you have liked it, don't forget to click the like button. And if you have not subscribed to it yet, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have liked the video and found it useful, please share this as much as you can with your friends and colleagues. And don't forget to watch the next video where we will discuss the calculations used are accurate and you can easily make a garment with not only the right specs, but a garment that looks good and fits even better, elevating the image of the wearer. Once again, thanks for watching.